Our Bible reading today comes from Psalm 63. Let's pray. Open thou your, our word, Lord, that we may see wonderful things from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night, because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. But those plotting me will come to ruin. They will go down into the depths of the earth. They will die by the sword and become the food of jackals. But the king will rejoice in God and all who trust in him will praise him while liars will be silenced. This is the word of the Lord. There are so many great psalms. What's your favourite psalm? There could be psalms of comfort, psalms of rejoicing, prophecy, lament. Over morning tea, I encourage you to discuss with someone else what is your favourite psalm and why is it your favourite psalm? Now, this was the question I was given. Jason, what is your favourite psalm? Can you preach on this on this, uh, this week in the holidays? And so the psalm I've chosen is Psalm 63, being satisfied in God. It's it's wonderful, uh, wonderful topic. I'm going to pray for us as we look into this passage. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we can meet together. We thank you we meet as your people, your children. And Lord, we listen to you. We pray, Father, that you'll fill us with your spirit, give us understanding, insight and honesty before you. We pray that you'll challenge us and encourage us through your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Australia is famous for beautiful landscapes, some of these great desert landscapes. We see all the red sand, and as we look at these places, it's so arid. It's a difficult place to live out in the desert. There is hunger and thirst, people searching for refreshing and water in the desert. In this psalm, we see David spiritually dry and he's searching and he's craving for relief is craving for filling he craves to be satisfied now people are satisfied by all different things people are satisfied by foods or their favorite restaurant they love to go to maybe time with family people are satisfied with music and the arts what satisfies you what is it that you long for and seek after and does it satisfy? How long does it satisfy you for? Is it lasting? We will look in this psalm and see that David is satisfied. And so let's look into the passage and uh, see what he has to say to us. He's a songwriter. And so in this song, he talks about his trial and dryness in verse 3 it says in a dry and parched land where there is no water so here we have one who is troubled there is no water interesting phrase speaking about how he is lacking that he's not satisfied at this point he's lacking something he wants more of something and maybe you can experience empathize with his, his experience a spiritual dryness maybe you can remember a time in your life when you experience a time of dryness 
or maybe now, am exper- yeah, experiencing this challenge. And we see into David's heart in this song, verse 1, it says, Earnestly I seek you, I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you. Here David is seeking after God, he thirsts for his God, he longs uh, for God. It's earnest. It's from the heart, this song, resonate in his whole being to seek after God. And so as he is in this space, this dry space, what does he do? What he he does is he remembers. He remembers being in the temple, worshipping the Lord in the sanctuary, it says. He remembers when things were good. When he looked on God and he saw God and he beheld, verse 2, God's glory and his power. And he remembers like he's experienced God's love also. Verse 3, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. What a line this is, because your love is better than than life, better than living, better than anything else in all the world. This is the greatest thing to be experiencing the love of God. And he's experienced that love, that loyal love of God, hasn't he? David, as he saw God's protection, whether it's lions or Goliath, or as a king being delivered after being chased, he's experienced that loyal love, protection, and care from his God. This love that does not fade or get tired or worn out. So for him to experience that love, to know it, to walk in it is better than anything else in all the world. He seeks God. He remembers being close to God and is turned into praise and celebration in his Lord. There are so many great hymns, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. What psalm is that one? 42, Psalm 42, as the deer, we should sing this. What about we sing this all together? As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. It's a special celebration, isn't it? To long for God. And as it gets to that chorus there, God is the strength of his people. He's the strength of the King, David, and his strength for us. And so for David to go from that dryness and that distance from God, lacking and seeking after God, he finds his space with the Lord. And in another psalm, he is celebrating, needs God in his life, and he finds God. Now David longs for God and he's satisfied in God, verse 5. You satisfy me more than the richest feasts. I will praise you with songs of joy. Now, he uses an example we can relate to, a big meal, maybe a big family gathering, happy Sunday roast, perhaps, sitting back all satisfied, or maybe a Korean barbecue, and you've eaten all the food, and you're just satisfied and content. This is the space to be fulfilled, to be filled and to be in this space, happy and content in the Lord and with the Lord. And he's satisfied because he knows God and he knows how God has changed his life. So if we look at a few of the things we learn about God in this passage, verse 1, God is personal, he says, my God, the personal God. Verse 2, he's powerful and glorious 
He's the God who is on the throne with mighty strength and power. Verse 3, he's loving, loyal love. Verse 7, he is a helper. Verse 7 also, he's a protector. He lives under the shadow of his wings, under the wings and the care of God. This is the space where he lives. So he goes from this dryness to be satisfied with God. And then, so as this songwriter does, it turns into joy. It turns into celebration and praise. I will sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I will cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. He clings, he holds fast. So David's song, it has a section of tension and loss and trouble, but then it moves forward, moves forward remembering the joy it is to be sheltered by God and cared for by him. So David commits himself to, to cling and hold fast to the Lord. So God satisfies, and we see in the New Testament that Jesus satisfies. John chapter 6, 35, he says, I am the bread of life, Jesus says. It's just after, like he's feeding 5,000 people with the bread and fish. They go from being physically hungry to being physically satisfied after all that food all the leftover food because the blessings of God overflow and Jesus gives spiritual satisfaction he gives eternal life he gives freedom he saves and he goes to the cross to wash away sin look the lamb of God who this is Jesus who takes away sin and also also the the heart destroyer the sin of misguided worship, where we long for temporary things that do not last. He takes that sin away and leads us into a space of security in the sun. See, Jesus gives eternal security and peace. It comes by living in the shadow and care of the King. God satisfies and Jesus satisfies now, Augustine, 1,600 years ago, has this line, Our souls are restless until they find rest in the true and living God. Now, that's a great line, isn't it? Souls are restless. Our souls are chasing. They're looking for all different things. And people try to fill this hole in their hearts by replacing it with this and that. But nothing completes a person until they find the Lord and are rescued by him. Our souls are restless until they find rest in the true and living God. Now this psalm, this song, David, he's in a place of dryness. He's had the desert experience and he remembers God. He searches for God and he commits to holding on to him and so for us, if we'll take away a few points and reflect after uh, we go home, I encourage you to think about a few things. We need to be real. If it's going well with you and God, if you're in a good space with the Lord, praise Him. That is wonderful. This is the best place to be. Keep going. Keep clinging to Jesus. But we need to be real if we are in a dry space. We need to be honest as we come to the Lord. If we're not going well and we're dry, we need to ask, why? Why am I not satisfied in God? Ask God to show you in your heart what you're satisfied in. We need to be real and honest before the Lord. Next thing I want to say is dwell on God. David is a good example. He's going through this trial. So what he says, he remembers back, oh, I remember back in the temple. I remember in the sanctuary, looking to the Lord and beholding my God. I don't know how you do this if you're someone who writes poems or draws a painting or walks in the bush or what you do. But I encourage you to dwell on the Lord. 
sit there and focus on him, whether it's in a song or whatever it is. Sit and dwell on the Lord. And I encourage you as well, read a gospel. Maybe in the part like in the last while you've read through Luke or something, I encourage you, read a different gospel, maybe go to John or something. And just read through again. Remember the goodness of Jesus, how he helps, how he shows his kindness and his love for the weak and the thirsty. How he's the one who gives rest and a life to the full. I encourage you to dwell on the Lord. Look to him. Celebrate him. I want to say, sit long with Jesus. Not like that short visit from the grandkids that they were there for half an hour and you wish it was longer. Not that one. (laughs) Now, what the one where you sit around, sit long with Jesus and listen to him. I also want to say, remember who you are. In this psalm, God has turned his life around. I want to remember, I encourage you, remember who he has made you to be, the one in the shelter of his wings, the one who's loved with a love that is better than life. In God's care. Helped by God, the weak lifted up, clinging to Jesus. So friends, let us be real. Let's dwell on God. Let's remember who we are. And yeah, I encourage you, ask someone later, what's your favorite psalm? Why Why do you choose that one? And as we think about this one, how can we be satisfied? How can we be more satisfied in our Lord and cling to him? Now, I want to finish off with this story. Remember... When I was at Bible college, just a few years ago, I met a pastor. He was from Africa. He was speaking at the conference. His country had been through many difficult times. They had been going through a famine. There was great starvation. There was also violent attacks against the church. And I talked to this man. I, I said, what's your advice for a young pastor? I said to him. So he could have said anything. He could have said, said anything. What, what is your advice? He looked at me and said, cling to Jesus. This was his advice for a young pastor. Cling to Jesus. But this is good advice for everyone, isn't it? All ages, all parts of history. This is great advice. Cling to Jesus. And if we learn something from this psalm, I want to say, cling to Jesus and be satisfied in him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you that he gives long-lasting spiritual satisfaction. And Lord, we pray for anyone here feeling dry and distant from you. We pray, God, that in your care and the shelter of your wings, that they will find peace in you. Lord, we pray for all of us. Give us strength to hunger and thirst for you. Strengthen us to sit long before you. We pray you give us encouragement and strength. And we thank you so much that out of all the things in the world, that your love is better than life. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.